best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, been some conversations about comics eras, what uh, what ones are the best. I saw that Mark Millar, uh, in his newsletter, put out a really, really great, kind of well thought through, um, you know, write up of kind of comic errors and when it was the best and kind of who was involved and, and why it was good. And he, he kind of, he, he laid out a thesis. He proved it really well. It was entertaining read. It was good stuff. Uh, of course I was in a couple of Facebook groups where people buried him, uh, over it. Uh, it, it's, it's weird. The, the Mark Miller reaction at times, um, is it, it's most, it's jealousy more than anything else, but it's also, I mean, it's, it's jealousy over one specific thing. Obviously, the guy's made a lot of money, and I think there's there's some of that. But the the core of why people get jealous about him, I think, is because he has freedom, and I think that sums up kind of when people get really angry at uh, at a lot of different creators. They they basically go get it's not financial independence, it's uh, editorial independence. It's they're they're able to do the stories they want, and they're successful. And I think that irks a lot of people who you know don't have that. They, you know, they're working under editorial control and or when they've gone off and done something on their own, it hasn't been successful. So when given the keys, when said, hey, go, go, you know, do whatever. Let's see your vision. Vision sucks. And I think that's that's where some but that's where I think a lot of the Mark Millar jealousy uh, comes in that or people are confused which way to say his name. So he's, he's a man of mystery. He continues to be a man of mystery up until the point that we interview him, which I've been working on for well over a year now. So one, one of these days we'll get our schedules aligned. Um, I, I, this move screwed everything up anyway. Uh, but eras, uh, his conversation about eras was a good one. And I know there's a bunch of reaction videos to it and I probably should have done one myself, but I just enjoyed reading it. And it was, it was just good for me to think through and I'm sure we'll come up in other ways, like probably in little bits in this video. So, uh, here's a question about, uh, uh, you know, an idea for marketing. What, one thing I'd like to notice or to note for you to notice is, you know, i get lots of mail and do you notice how many of the, the letters, the mail that comes in are people trying to make the publishers money? They're, they're giving up suggestions about where to sell, what to print, how to do things, not in a, uh, not in a, there's a, like the, the Texas uh, roads suck so, so bad. Some of them, not some of them are nice, but some others are road. The one I'm on right now sucks. They have potholes. And if I drive too close to the pothole, the little car sensor alarm goes off. And every time on this section, I'm like you could clock where I am on the road in my videos by the, the uh, yeah, by the little car alarms going off. Um, it's, it's, it's comical. This is how I'm going to dox myself. My car is going to do it for me. Anyway, um, I, my, my point was, before I got derailed, is that it's interesting to me that so many people uh, are so interested in how do we make the publishers money? How do we help them? And so every now and then, you know, I, as somebody recommends my channel on Twitter, and by the, by the way, my, my channel has a fairly good reputation. Uh, you know, one, one side bleats on and on about uh, being a fence sitter, which, you know, is, is really coming from one group that can't take somebody's dick out of the mouth. Well, sorry, that was inappropriate. Um, but the other is uh, pros who uh, who say, you know, that channel is a hate channel. And I always like to point out the, this channel is filled with people trying to make you more money. Like, and, and not in a be different, write different stories, but literally just try and, and <laughs> just try and make the business. They're, they're trying to, to maximize what you're doing. Like, what what industry is there where people work so hard to make the people selling them the product more money? I I, I don't know. That, that strikes me. But anyway, here's his message. Hey, Perch. As a younger reader in my early 20s, I enjoy a lot of stuff from the Golden and Silver Age, like costumes, wacky stories, covers, etc. But obviously, this era is a difficult to read in print. What do you think of the big two doing an imprint series where every month you get a random Golden Age, Silver Age style story with that era's designs, similar art with the covers, even get some of the classic creators uh, of there like Walt Simonson and Neil Adams, even do sequels to some of the crazier stories from that era. Bring back classic costumes, power levels, and villains. Have you ever heard of an idea like this from the editors or creators I talked to? So just to be clear, um, you're, uh, you're saying style story, not reprint. So the, the big two, they, there is like Marvel Masterworks will reprint stuff. 
um, or they'll do facsimile editions of older things. But you're talking almost like X-Men Legends, but go much further with it. You know, make sure you're staffing this entire thing with a creative team uh, that fits that era and then brand it as the golden age and, and you do stuff like that. Um, I think it would be fun. I think uh, be really as long as you're you're doing all the things from the Gold and Silver Age, it'd be wonderful if you could also do the price. Uh, that would be that would be nice too. But but anyway, <laughs> PC puts out a ten cent book. Everybody probably loses their mind. Um, I think it would be fun. So one thing that I think would be uh, a cool idea, and I I think it would. So here's why I think this this idea is a good one because it has multiple ways that you make money. What you do is you put out a monthly book, you set it in the gold and the silver age, like a lot of those crazy Superman stories that I every now and then do. And I would have the book, you know, be, you know, three ninety nine, you know, I guess, yeah, be that price and be double sized. So in this comic, reprint, uh, you know, one of the Superman stories. Most many of those Superman stories uh, were, you know, two part. Like the, even the Lois Lane, you had. You know, two stories in one comic, so you'd get like a 16-page story or so, and then and then a second one. So print just one of those, so reprint it, but then also do as your idea suggests a new kind of 22-page story that is either a sequel or ties into it or you know just takes the idea a little further or whatever. Just just find some of those stories that you could do more with, and then do it, and then hire some you know classic. Artists. Now, if you're going all the way back to the gold and silver age, then, you know, unfortunately, a lot of those creators have, have passed on. But uh, even if you got a newer creator who drew in that style, that would still be pretty great. I, I think that that would be uh, th that'd be a lot of fun. And uh, you kind of you, you basically give the original and you give kind of this this brand new story set in that era. But the trick is, from a marketing standpoint, you really need to go all the way in branding it and making it look and, and labeling it and, and everything. It has to say, you know, tales from the golden age or whatever else. Um, don't go too cheesy with it, but, but you really got to nail the brand and why that's so important is because it can't get lost on the shelf of just like a, uh, and by the way, don't do it cute either. Don't do it. Like it was found in the desk drawer that DC did that. Remember they did the, the series where they had a bunch of comics that they, they just had found they're you know sitting around and they they decided to print them. Don't don't make it sound like, hey, here's some garbage that we thought. I don't know. Somebody will pay for this. Make it like a, you know tout your horse. Say this is celebration of an era that helped make the comics what they are today. The, the, well, that, maybe don't say it that way, but just <laughs> make the comics great. Um, and then put things in there like this comic sold a million copies. I mean, just, or whatever it happened to be like, go ahead and, and brag about the numbers. Yeah. You're going to get some people poking fun at you going, yeah, they don't sell that today, but the, the vast majority, 99% of the, uh, of the people, uh, who, you know, who are in that, who are buying that comic have no idea. They're not going to get into the money aspect of any of this. So just go ahead and, and, uh, and, and, and brag about it. Like one, you know, this is low. I mean, if you want to put out that Lois Lane is a big deal, do you have Bendis awkwardly shove dialogue into characters mouth talking about what a huge fan they are? Or do you put out a Lois Lane book, you know, reprint one of the comics and then do a new story in the same style. And on the, you know, the front page or the first page of the comic, you say things like Lois Lane once sold half a million copies across the world. This, this comic itself, in fact, sold 600,000 copies. Th that's a pretty big deal. Brag about it. Like, you got legitimate, cool stuff you can brag about, so brag about that. And, and I think that that would be a pretty powerful, pretty great statement. Um, you know, that's, that's what I would do. I think be, it would be, you know, it'd be fun, and you can have fun with it. You've got to get the right creative team on it. You've got to get people who are, you know, going to celebrate, not mock. You know, it, it can't be like, don't, this is one case where don't put Mark Russell on it. Mark Russell does a good job of kind of mocking those eras. This one shouldn't, you know, you, you shouldn't make fun of it. The comic itself should feel like a celebration. It should feel like we're taking this very seriously. Like this is a pretty cool, you know, story. I don't know. You got to find somebody who just understands how to write for that that time, 
as if it was that time, not, you know, as, as if you're doing a parody of that time. Um, and, but if you do, if you do all that successfully, you will have a, you'll, you'll be satisfying a fun niche. So you will definitely get people who will, who will go in and buy that stuff. Cause they just enjoy classic comic storytelling. Um, as long as it's authentic, um, you will get some clout because you get a brag about, uh, you know, how many comics you used to sell and, and the, you know, this was a big deal for a long time. So you get to, you know, kneel into that legacy. Um, but you also have the opportunity to do uh, put out a couple omnibuses from the Gold and Silver Age. So your little last page of your comic can say, if you enjoyed this, why not go spend $125 and get like 50 of these comics all in one big hardbound edition? And you will, you will renew interest in the Gold and Silver Age from people who are, who are younger. And I guarantee you, look at how um, some of, you know, look at how some of these uh, shows work where they're, they're kind of a little bit um, edgy. They're a little bit, I mean, look at the Superman comics from the golden silver age are hilarious because they Superman's acting in a very kind of different way from how we perceive him today. And there's a, there's a certain amount of, uh, it's just, it's hard to explain the writing fits kind of some of the things you might see on, uh, you know, adult swim or, or places like that. It just, it, it would, you might find an entirely new audience and get a lot of more money out of it. So a lot of more money out of it. All right. I'm ta- I'm talking myself in circles. I need my coffee and, uh, need to get away from these potholes. So there you, there you have it. Anyway, great mail, great idea. Um, I think would be a absolute, you know, no brainer, something to do. Funny thing would cost them very little and you, you know, but the key is you've got to get a creative team doing it that, is uh, legitimately, honestly loves that era, knows how to replicate it, and isn't going to use it as an excuse to like uh, insert little Easter eggs to show their contempt for superheroes, which uh, I, you know, unfortunately happens too often. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for the mail. Let me know what uh, the rest of you think of this idea, and thanks for listening.